All right, Shalom Akin, Shalom Yasharala, first and foremost. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Chakwadash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew. Also, want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And also want to send out a hearty shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so in efforts of waking up the hopefully elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone Branch here in Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And Lord willing, this is edifying, okay? Now, what I want to go into... Um, it's something that I mentioned earlier. I mean, well, in my spiritual spiel that I did this week. Um, uh, and what I went into was uh, uh, basically us being prisoners. OK, now, for the most part, brothers who are in this faith, we totally get it. We understand that we uh, we offended the Heavenly Father. OK, and we were sold into captivity. OK, and that has happened to us as a nation pretty much since our inception. Going all the way back to uh, pretty much the Egyptian rule or the Egyptian kingdom, okay? And um, all the way up until this point, we've pretty much been in captivity, okay? But um, the fact of the matter is, is the majority of our people have forgotten, okay? To the point where, like it says in Isaiah, they don't even consider, okay? They don't consider what? That they're the children of God, okay? That uh, we made a covenant with the Heavenly Father, OK, he is highly, highly upset with his children. OK, and he's about to lower the boom on them. OK, our people are totally oblivious to it. And how do we know that? Their actions. OK, their actions every day. Uh, um, you see something that just absolutely blows your mind. OK, and I think I mentioned this in the spiritual spiel where they took the casket. I think I was out there in Dominican Republic. A brother did a video on it. Um, where they took the casket, you know, um, out of a funeral procession uh, at, the, at the church or whatever it was, and then, you know, dumped the body out and started beating it, man, okay? So you can only imagine how furious the Heavenly Father is with our people, okay? But the irony is they don't even consider, you know? They don't even have a clue, which is how the Most High wants it, okay? It's only the worst times in history going to smack you upside the goddamn head, you know? But the reality is our people don't even acknowledge that they're in prison, okay? And uh, like I said in the spiritual spiel, what prompted this whole idea, you know, in the spirit to go into this is, uh, like I said, I saw a guy with a pit bull in the prison cell, okay? Now, whether it was Photoshopped or not, hey, who knows, you know? But I've seen worse. No, I won't say worse, <laughs> but I've seen other things that incites that Jake is actually making himself comfortable in prison, Okay, and actually uh, enjoying prison, you know, like I said, I mentioned earlier this week, you know, I got friends that pretty much have been institutionalized. And, uh, you know, one of my friends, I, I basically asked him, where is it? Is it harder out here or in prison? He smiled, smirked and said it's easier in there. You see, and that's how Esau makes it, man. He makes uh, being wicked infectious. Okay, and a lot of guys rather, you know. They don't have any fear of doing anything on the outside because they know they're just going back to prison where they're, where they're comfortable. They're given three hots in a cot, three hot meals, a cot, you know, you get the shower, you, you're told when and what to do like a child. And that's the majority of our people. OK, they're children. <clears throat> but the, 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 the point I want to uh, uh, address is we're in prison, man. OK, whether you believe it or not, we're in prison. OK. That's why the scriptures tell us that this is not our rest. How, why would you make a prison cell? <laughs> why would you make a prison cell your rest? Okay. Now, we do have comfort here in this prison cell. Okay. With the, and that is the scripture. That's the only thing that's going to comfort us while we're in prison. Nothing else. Okay. Everything else is going to make you insatiable, meaning you can't be satisfied by nothing. You're always chasing something, whether it's that bag with holes in it, a woman. Okay a better life or vanity. Basically, that's what all of that is, is vanity. Okay. Even the preacher said that Solomon, you see, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. It is. Why? Because this ain't the kingdom of heaven. 
This ain't a kingdom where righteousness dwells. The Most High still hasn't poured out his holy hell here, man. Okay? That should be the overlying and, uh, and, overlying and underlying issue. The Most High is about to bring wrath on this place. Okay? And, and that's the irony. Our people are actually comfortable here and actually praying against the prophecy. Okay? But they're going to find out the worst way that that wasn't the right way. Okay? So um, let's jump into a few precepts. And like I said, I wanted to, uh, you know, intertwine, um, you know, as far as us being in prison and how it relates to the brotherhood and our walk. OK, but I'll probably do that in another uh, part. But in this part, what I want to address is that our people don't even know, you know, the, the state that we're in. OK, and what's coming. OK, and that they're actually prisoners, you see. And that's a damn shame, man. OK, but hey, nobody reads. Nobody reads the scripture. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28. OK, and I will. I'll start at 15. OK, it's only right. Matter of fact, I'll start at one and then I'll jump to 15 and then jump to two more other precepts. I mean, other verses in Deuteronomy 28 is Deuteronomy 28 and one. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahweh, thy power to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day that Yahweh, thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. OK, so it's obvious that we're not set above all the nations, although we're the most talented. OK, we, we sing the best. We dance the best. We dress up the best. But guess what? The most I don't give a shit about none of that, man. OK, to the point where he said, I don't want to hear your songs, man. Take them and shove them up your ass. You see. So it's obviously that we didn't hearken. OK, and keep the commandments to the best of our ability. So guess what? The most high said this. This is our verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Okay, and it's obviously we are a cursed people. Okay, people never uh, sit back and uh, uh, come to the understanding or the reality that. Wherever Israelites are scattered at, okay, let's just say here in America, wherever Israelites are, they are the lowest on the totem pole, okay? They're the ones in the ghettos. They're the ones with the worst health, okay, and, 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 and death uh, uh, predominantly due to diet, okay? So it's obvious, and when you read from 15 on down, it's a bunch of curses, man, that befall our people, but they're also left for a sign to let us know who the true children of Israel are. OK, and when you read it, we fit these curses to the T. OK, so let's jump down to. Uh, I believe it's 36. Yep. Deuteronomy 28 and 36. And it reads, uh, Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there. Shall thou serve other gods, wood and stone? OK, and that's pretty much happened to the nation of Israel, like I said, since the inception. OK, but more specifically over here. OK, and what are those gods of wood and stone? You, you got Cesare Borgia. OK, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. OK, and then you got stone, whether it be the, the cobblestone, the uh, Muslims uh, or, or, or whether it be Buddha or any other false deity. OK. And it say, uh, 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 I read it from the top again. It says, Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Okay. And that's exactly what happened, man. Okay. But like I said, our people are totally, totally, totally oblivious to this. They just think everything is and exists. OK, and it's just the way it is because it's the way it is. No. OK, we highly offended the Heavenly Father. So he put us in this predicament, which entails that we are captives. OK, when you pay tribute. OK, and have a birth certificate and a Social Security number. OK, you are considered a product. OK, that's why on a birth certificate, your names are the name is in all caps. You see. 
Let's jump to uh, verse 41. It says, thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them for they shall go into captivity. OK, and this is speaking about during the time of the transatlantic slave trade. But ultimately, this is, has always happened to us. OK, but more specifically with this damn devil Esau, man, part and families. OK, but guess what? That was a part of our punishment. The Lord made it uh, uh, plain and clear. You do what I say. I'll put you above everything. You don't do what I say. I'll make you the tail and not the head. And all these curses are going to pursue thee. OK. And one of those main curses is going into captivity under people that are. Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Pretty much insignificant compared to us. OK. The scriptures say that the most high uh, 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 the, uh, considers the abundance of the nations to be the unto spittle or drop that father from a vessel. You see? So really that's mockery for the heavenly father to set us up. I mean, set, uh, 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 give us into the hands of our enemies and to, um, you know, have them rule over us. Okay. But our people don't care if at best Jake wants to be even with the ruling class right now, which is Esau Edom. You see, let's get another precept. Get another precept. This is uh, the book of Baruch. This is the book of Bar Baruch, chapter 4. And we'll start at, we'll start at 5. Baruch 4 and 5, it says, Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved the Most High to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies, okay? And, and well, there's no worse punishment, okay, than to be sold unto the people that hate you the most, which is ultimately all the nations. Psalms 83 points that out. They all confederate together to, to blot us out from being a people, okay? So the Most High basically said, hey, look, you guys broke my the agreement that you signed. You see, you broke the agreement. So guess what? I'm going to sell you to your enemies and they're going to have their way with you. Why? Because the heavenly father is our covering. OK. And by being disobedient, we lose that covering just like Adam and Eve did. That's what made them naked. OK. It wasn't physically naked. It was spiritually. OK. They had no covering. They had no protection from the heavenly father. You see. Um. Verse seven, for ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the most high. Ye have forgotten the everlasting God that brought you up and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. OK, so that's the predicament that we're in. And like I say, our people don't have a clue. But guess what? They shall know it uh, by pain after death. OK, and that's the reality. Everybody's going to know. It, OK, this ain't something that is going to be a mystery for forever. OK, now, will they hearken? Of course not. OK, that's the reason why the punishment is going to be so severe. OK, and the scriptures tell us they're not they're not going to hearken. OK, but they're going to know you don't have to hearken to know the most high is going to put it on them. man. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 137 and one. It says by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yeah, we wept when we remember Zion. OK, now, of course, this is speaking about ancient Babylon, but this holds true for now because the remnant have done this, man. We remember Zion, okay, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemiah Shai. Verse 2, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, sing us one of those songs of Zion. Verse 4, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You see, and that's the, the, the mindset of a wise man who knows that he's in captivity. Okay. Now, of course, we, we hang out, you know, have a few drinks and kick it, you know, go out with your woman or whatever. But we know this ain't our rest. Okay. And we're not trying to make uh, this, this a, 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 a homestead, you know. We're not planning 10, 15 years down the road. We would have loved for this place to be destroyed last, uh, uh, last year or uh, yesterday. What, 24 hours ago? You see? Why? Because like the scriptures say, surely oppression make it for wise man mad. Okay? The majority of our people don't know shit, man. 
Okay, they don't even know that they're captive, that they're in a prison cell. Okay, and that's pretty much the same sentiment you see with guys that are locked up. Okay, they're hanging out, sagging their pants, got on shoes, squatting down, taking pictures. Which is absolutely comical, man. And that's the same state that our people are in today. Okay. Uh, verse 5. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Okay. So, hey, that's what our people, their, their, their tongue should be cleaving to the roof of their mouth. Okay. And their right hand forget their cunning. Because really, what is our cunning? To be obedient and have the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay? That is our, our wisdom in the sight of the nations. Okay? So opposed to that, what are we? A proverb and a byword. Okay? Because the nations know who we are. But you can't pay a nigga to, to, to come back to his heritage. But they will. They will. Uh, 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 most unwillingly, okay, and that remnant willingly, okay, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemia Shah, okay. Let's go back to Baruch. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 2, and I believe we want 30. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30. Oh, one second. Mm, it started 20. Salakia, so like uh, 29. Uh, this is Baruch chapter 2, verse 29. If you will not hear my voice, okay, going back to Genesis, Salakia, so Deuteronomy, the 28th verse, and really the Most High has been uh, 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 giving out the same cry since the beginning, okay, going all the way back to Adam and Eve, okay, when the law was verbal. Verse 29, if you will not, Hear my voice. Surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. And that's exactly the case. And when you look at the, the, the you know, just the genius of, of the Heavenly Father. OK, um, you know, to divide and conquer is the best way to I mean, to divide a nation is the best way to conquer them. OK, and we've definitely be, been conquered to the point where our people, OK, Actual Judites will refer to uh, uh, Amalek, okay, or E, as uh, as Jews. You see, totally forsook the Lord and don't even consider, okay. But that's a byproduct of being disobedient. It says, "If you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations, where I will scatter them. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people." But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves and shall know that I am Yahweh by Hashem Shai, their power, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. OK, and that's specifically speaking about here in Babylon. OK, or Great Babylon, uh, a.k.a. America. OK, because remember, Paul spoke about a falling away first. OK, and it was a point where no Israelite knew they were were Israelite. OK, but guess where the mass awakening happened here in Babylon, here in America. OK, and that's proof. Why? Because we're standing, you know, uh, 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 with the word of Yahweh by Shimei Shai in our mouth and confessing it in the face of our enemies. You see, and it's miraculous to the point where like the elder apostle uh, uh, basically said that a guy pulled up to them in a limo. And pretty much was flabbergasted and asked, how the hell did you guys figure this out? Like, we spent trillions of dollars to hide this from you, but you guys figured it out. Okay, why? Because the Most High is not in all his thoughts. Okay, he didn't, he didn't take into account that the Most High would pour his spirit out. Okay, and here we are. Okay, so that, that's the good news, you know, that the Lord prophesied that, that we would hear him in the land of our captivities. Okay, and like uh, the brother Shapatia from uh, Chicago just came down and told us he went to Mexico, okay? Third world country now. No internet service, no none of that. And he ran across a guy prophesying, man, okay? Bringing it out. He actually broke bread with him and all, man, okay? How did that happen? Through the spirit of power of Yahweh by Shemia Shah, you see? Um, 
Y'all believe that's it on that. Let's get one more and we'll close this thing out. Uh, yeah, I believe it's Salak, like, yeah. Lamentations, yeah. Lamentations chapter 4. Uh, verse Lamentations 4. I'll start at 21. Lamentations 4 and 21. It says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. Okay, and what is that cup? Slavery, man. And afflictions and all the hell and double portion of what they've done to us. Okay, that's why the Lord is telling them to rejoice and be glad. Okay, you're an Edomite man. You need to be living it up, man, because you got a thousand years of complete hell and then total extermination. Okay, so you should be living it up. You know, go to Wall Street, invest and do, you know, do the things you need to do to enjoy yourself. Because once we get our hands on, well, Salakia, once Yahweh Shimiao Shai gets his hands on you, it's a wrap, bucko. Okay, verse 21, rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. That dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. Okay? So you're going to go through the same thing we went through times two. Okay? I remind you, your, your slave masters are going to have spiritual powers. Okay? It's going to be a bad day. Okay? But here's the point. Verse 22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. And see, this draws a direct connect. Okay? Showing you. Like the scriptures say, uh, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. You see? But right before verse 22, it's telling Edom to rejoice. Showing you the correlation. You see? It says, verse 22, the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Okay? So that's a part of the gospel, brothers. Yeah, we're captive, okay? But uh, guess what? We're, we're at the end of our ca uh, captivity, okay? The punishment of our iniquity has been accomplished. And what proves that? We know who we are. We know the names of the Heavenly Father. We're standing on our watch, okay? Prophesying the downfall of, uh, of Babylon through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, okay? So Lord willing, that was edifying. With that, I say Shalom.